Stop wearing your shirt wrong. Eight unknown tips for the perfect fit for every man. So, a shirt is your everyday fitting. What if I tell you that you were wearing the shirt wrong? All these years, you were following the wrong path. And by wearing your shirt correctly, you can easily impress someone. A shirt is the basic wearing of a man. Well, it might look simple to wear a shirt, but it is not that simple. Yes, wearing a shirt might be easy, but wearing the perfect shirt is quite difficult. Half of the men don't even know about the perfect shirt. If you're one of those, don't worry, we have come here just to help you. Because of its prominent position on the body and its close closeness to the head and neck, a shirt's cut and fit are of utmost significance. The fit of a shirt in the torso is the focal point of an outfit when the shirt is the primary component of the ensemble, such as when a person isn't wearing any outerwear or layers. A shirt that fits properly will accentuate the excellent aspects of a person's physique without attracting unneeded attention to the undesirable aspects of their figure. The shirt will create an outline of the body without revealing too many private details, providing a figure that is pleasing without drawing attention to every nook and cranny. When a shirt is in the background, like when layers are worn, the placket and the collar become more significant. In both instances, the shirt acts as a visual cue that directs attention to the subject's face. When layers are worn, this appearance may be accentuated by the V-shape formed by the lapels of a jacket or by a jacket that is only partially buttoned. If you do not have any layers on, you can get this look by undoing a button or wearing a V-neck. The collar is also quite important since it plays a role in the framing of the face. Because of these factors, it is especially important to pay attention to how the shirts in your wardrobe fit you. Now, let us discuss 8 ways that can help you improve your appearance. 1. The collar should rest around your neck without restricting movement, and it should not be too tight. You want the collar to be as close to the neck as is comfortable, as this will enable ventilation without leaving too large of a gap between the two. Generally speaking, you should be able to fit two fingers into the shirt without it cutting into your neck. This is the standard. If you have fewer fingers than that, the collar will probably be too tight, but if you have more, the shirt will probably be too loose. Because it frames the face, the shape of the collar is another important consideration. If you have a round face, a pointed collar will make you look thinner, while a spread collar will make your face appear wider. Long necks look better in collars with a tall spread, while short necks look better in point collars. The goal is to find a collar that complements your face rather than detract from it. 2. The sleeve should not be so snug that the individual features of your arm are visible, nor should they be so loose that they flap in the breeze. They should allow some motion and airflow, but not an excessive amount of either. The end of the shirt cuff should fall about an inch beyond the actual wrist bone, which is where the palm of your hand meets your wrist. It needs to be tight enough so that it does not move past your palm, but it also needs to be loose enough so that there is no restriction and air can move freely through it. When you bend your arm, the cuff on your shirt shouldn't move up your wrist by more than an inch. 3. The shoulder seam should meet the corner of your shoulder bone, which is the point on your shoulder that is essentially the farthest on your shoulder from the center of your chest. This is the point at which the shoulder is considered to be the most remote from the center of your chest. Armholes should not be so tight that they cut into the underarm. Instead, they should be loose enough to allow for comfortable movement. Nevertheless, try not to leave too much room. To quickly determine whether or not your armholes are too low, simply tuck your shirt into your pants. If lifting your arms to a 45 degree angle causes your shirt to come out of your pants by more than an inch or so, your armholes are probably too low. 4. It's important to get a dress shirt that's comfortable around your chest, under your arms, and across your upper back so that you can move freely. The fit of a fitted shirt is snug but not too tight. So that your body can be seen through the shirt, the garment's chest should fill out. The button should not pinch your skin when you stand still with your arms at your sides. 5. It is the shape and size of the armhole that determines how a shirt fits in the chest, shoulder, and armpits. To accommodate a wide range of body shapes, most shirt makers offering small, medium, large sizing make their armholes extra large. It's not a good sign if you can see fabric dangling from your arms. If you want a tapered fit under your arm, your armholes should be shaped so that you can still move your arm freely. 6. 
Tucking in your pants is an essential part of any man's formal attire. Therefore, it's important to make sure that your shirt doesn't hang out when you're wearing it tucked in. For a well-fitted shirt, there are usually two vertical back darts positioned over the small of your back, which helps to create a tapered waistline. 7. You want the sleeve of your shirt to look like it was tailored to your body, but it should still be comfortable enough for you to move around in. When you pinch your sleeve at the bicep, you should ideally have between one and one and a half inches of additional fabric and the shirt should fit you at the forearm. Your sleeve should terminate around one half of an inch below your wrist. It is especially crucial to pay attention to this detail when wearing your shirt with a jacket as you will want to ensure that the cuff of your shirt terminates exactly half an inch below the hem of your sleeves of your jacket. See our guide for measuring sleeves. 8. When you pull the shirt away from your chest or stomach with just a little bit of force, there should be no more than three to four inches of excess fabric hanging from your torso. The torso should be slim enough to meet this requirement. With light pulling, the fabric should not be taut against the skin. However, the shirt ought to not restrict motion, and it's not a good idea to wear something that fits extremely close to the skin. When it comes to shirts that need to be tucked in, the length needs to be long enough so that it does not come out of place even when the wearer is moving around normally. Shirts designed for more formal wear, such as dress shirts, will have shirt tails at the bottom, whereas more casual shirts, which are intended to be worn untucked, will have flat or curved bottoms. When it comes to shirts that are worn untucked, the length of the shirt should be sufficient enough so that normal motion does not expose the wearer's skin or undershirt. Shirts that are worn untucked should not extend past the bottom of the zipper on your pants. The military tuck is a neat trick that can be used in the event that you have a shirt that is too big around the waist. To accomplish this, Pinch the sides of the shirt at the sides of the waist until an equal amount of extra fabric is created on both sides of the shirt. Now fold that piece of fabric back on itself and use the waistband of your pants to hold it in place. Well, I think we've reached the end of our video for today. That's gonna do it today. So what do you think about these tips? Are there any great ones that you think we might have left out in this video? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you have any kinds of comments, any kinds of questions, or any kinds of suggestions, as always, feel free to ask us in the comment box too. We are here for you. If you like these tips, make sure you please like and share them with your friends. And if you want to watch more videos like this, as always, I'll remind you to subscribe to our channel. I hope you have a great day, and thank you so much for watching our video, and we'll see you in the next one.